This series of videos has had a long period of gestation in my mind, and it grows from a question I have been musing since I took my first degree many years ago. The question I had then, and which I think I now have now answered to my own satisfaction, is simple enough. Why masonry? The beauty, elegance, and depth of the Masonic system of morality is self-evident to anyone who has been admitted to the privileges of the craft. The intricate relationship and moral lessons which accrue degree by degree are profound in their import and significance. The question I have had, in my mind, went to the heart of this. In short, what made a group of rationalist academics and clergy in the 17th and 18th centuries choose masonry as the vehicle for unveiling this philosophy? Other traditional crafts had equal claims to antiquity. The medieval guild system spanned any number of occupations whose tenets and traditions could have provided moral exemplars similar to those built on in Freemasonry. Think of metal workers, cloth weavers, potters, shipwrights. As an example, here is a list of the major guilds who had charters to operate in the City of London in the late 1300s. One would think that almost any one of these could have furnished the material for moral and symbolic lessons similar to those we find in the craft. All possess their own modes of recognition, ancient traditions and symbolism designed to maintain their integrity. All also possess the egalitarianism and universality of application beloved of the rationalist enlightenment mind. What was it that masonry specifically possessed that none of the others could provide? From my researches, I have come to a conclusion, and it is a personal conclusion only, that the answer to this question can be found in the person of Pythagoras and his teachings. He appears but briefly in our craft ceremonial. Two specific occasions are of particular significance, but the import of his inclusion, I feel, goes to the heart of the philosophical system driving the Masonic project. To explain this relationship is complicated, and requires a number of cumulative steps. For this reason, I have decided to break the topic into a number of separate videos or chapters, seven in number, of which this is the first. Each can stand alone as an investigation of a particular theme, but all accrue to the conclusions that I shall draw in the seventh video, Pythagoras and Freemasonry. In this last video, I shall be drawing upon and commenting on aspects of ritual, practice and ceremonial of pure ancient masonry, so it will be a private video, only accessible to those who have completed all degrees, up to and including the Holy Royal Arch. Following this video, the videos will be The Pythagorean Question, The Pythagoreans, The Philosophy of Pythagoras, Mathematics and Cosmology, Pythagoras and Platonism, and finally, Pythagoras and Freemasonry. The videos will be completed sequentially starting in August 2020, and I hope to have the full series published over the succeeding couple of months. I hope you enjoy the journey.